I am back in Topanga with David in his hillside garden and today we are going to make fast work of planting these two beds. Since it's already the second week in March, we don't have time to start seeds. David bought a bunch of nursery plants. These are all gourmet greens mm -hmm. and you've got some wave petunias. Wave petunias and these are marigolds and these are all salad greens. So we're gonna fill up these two beds and show you how we do it. Shall we? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I've asked David to lay out the plants like he likes them. And he's a big proponent of companion planting and one four inch pot of borage is going in each of these two beds. We have already prepped the soil with azomite, compost, chicken manure, biodynamic compost, these bed and his own compost, these beds are so ready to grow. We are going to interplant flowers, brassicas, leafy greens, salad greens, you name it. It's the second week in March and we got to get this in the ground. So this is how Uh, uh, no, I'm gonna. I, I throw some money into. I, you know what? I can't. I don't remember where my companion gardening book went because I can't remember if I put onions in with the gourmet greens or not. What I do is I plant the gourmet greens on the sides in arm reach distance. And given that this is a big, this is a bigger bed. Some of these beds are narrower. Then I plant flowers in the middle with a borage plant that has beautiful blue flowers which by the way people in medieval times used to get inebriated. You can make a little tea out of it. That is the center of flowers that attract the beneficial insects. I'll put a borage plant in the middle of each bed, at least one, and the praying mantids will climb to the top like an eagle and sit on the top of the borage plant and scan the entire garden. Yeah, see how we're going around? Yeah. After we get all this in, we'll enter plant some flowers. That's how I do it. Yeah, you know, I think we're going to be able to fill up this bed. I have to be Yeah, and usually. Oh, you just want to ride by? Oh, I was going to use it. Oh, Oh, this bed is coming together. Okay. So as you can see, I don't, at least in the gourmet lettuce bed, I don't do a lot of compulsive planning as to where everything goes. I just put out all the greens and then I put out a bunch of onions and... You got the onions? Yeah, there they are. And garlic. Mm -hmm. Garlic. Do you want to stick cloves in here or what are you going to do? Do what? Garlic plants? Yeah. Yeah, yeah cloves. Uh, yeah, you just put cloves in. Yeah, and they are... Too a, light. They usually come in November, so it's now March. Yeah, I know. They might not work. Yeah. No, I think your idea is... That's what we'll do, but that will also be wave petunia because the wave petunia is also so the two of them together. Yeah, yeah in the 
way Petunia tracks again all sorts of gem controls. It is like improvisation. I just like to wait until the place kind of presents itself. I can put it near the borage on this side. But though the borage, as you say, will tumble over. It'll it, get about this wide. I know. You'll eat all this stuff before it does, though. Yeah, oh, you got to pop right. that marigold in. That's not in. Yeah, right there. Keep going. Oh, yeah. You see it? Yep. Okay. All right, I'll get that in there. First. Don't you want a regular spade? All uh, you gotta that, do, if you stick it in and you just push it back. Um, th this work, this ground is so open. Okay, whatever you like. Okay. I mean, you're right. That would be, but you know, I just don't have one handy. Okay, so we have nasturtium for the strawberry bed, and what I do there, it's a good companion plant. Once it starts getting big and rangy, I take the arms of the nasturtium plant if they're looping over things and just spread them around on the ground that it acts as a sort of living mulch that keeps the sun off the ground you know how the strawberries reset themselves i you know how they'll they send out, out. A, they'll set out a satellite strawberry yeah i love that i do too i always use those things and they're oftentimes they're the best plants too This is about the space. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. This would be good. Yeah, that's good. Or unless you want it here and here. You know, whatever you like. That I like that here and here. And you well, you could always put a flower in there. Yeah. The nasturtium is going up here, right? One, two, three. Um, no. We're oh, gonna put here. one nasturtium here. One? Yeah, this one. Okay. How about if I plant that borage? Go ahead. Since I'm over here. Yeah. I'm gonna put it right there. Where do you want the uh Mr. Mr. Um okay. oh, I can't remember how tall the nasturtium gets. It doesn't get that tall, does it? Nasturtium? This tall? Oh it does? Yeah. But I mean, you know, after it takes off. Why don't you put the nasturtium in that corner? Yeah, okay. Like put one up there and What do you think? I think it's all in. We did, we did it. That was fast. Two beds, it's gonna create a lot of food. Ah, yeah, I think I could take my hat off. Whew, oh, cheers. cheers. <laughs> Probably got dirt all over my face. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. That's a pomegranate. I love pomegranate. Yeah, pomegranate's nice. You should have a pomegranate tree. Yeah. Yeah, I'll probably put one in. You, you need a pomegranate, you need... Um, Avocado. You need elderberry, pomegranate, uh, moringa. Oh, that feels good. That was fast planting. Mm -hmm. I mean, two beds out of five in what? Two hours? <laughs> At the most. Yeah. How many hours? Two. Did we work for two hours? Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, you were here for two hours. We probably work for about an hour and 15 minutes. God, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's a beautiful day. It's These clouds. Beautiful. There are five things I would suggest to think about if you're going to start a hillside garden. First, check the contours of the land very carefully and contour your beds to fit the contours of the land. It'll save you a lot of time and unnecessary effort. Second, 
when you think about laying the, the raised beds out, you'll have to determine how many will fit into that space. And think about the size of the raised beds. They really should be no more than about four feet wide because you want to be able to get around all sides of those and reach all the way into the middle. And that will allow you to utilize them to the, to the greatest degree. In some of my bigger beds, I lay down planks in the middle, even though they're eight to 10 feet across. Third thing, leave room for pathways. Um, you wanna have a comfortable pathway that you can use with a wheelbarrow, small wheelbarrow, because that will help you move around because you're gonna be up going up and down the hill to your bed. The next thing is making sure that you use construction cloth on the bottom before you put any earth into the beds. You want to dig the beds out to the bottom or a little actually about three or four inches below the bottom of your lowest vertical boards on the side and put hardware cloth all along the bottom and just raise it up along the sides and staple it to the sides. The gophers will never get through it. My beds have been up here for um, 20 years and the gophers haven't gotten through. That'll save you a lot of time in the end. Third thing, it might be the fourth thing by this point, is uh, using good wood. If you can use redwood, do. Um, don't use treated railroad ties, they're poisonous. The fifth thing is use good earth. Chances are the earth that you'll be digging out is not going to be of a high enough quality to create a soft, collapsible earth like we have in this bed. So you may have to have a little expense of, of uh, getting some good earth. Plants love good drainage. So if you can't afford to put high quality soil that you buy in the beds, use amendments. You can get great amendments. You can get information on your soil from the county extension where you live. Then you can find ways to correct the pH and all of that. Uh, so amendments can do it as well. The biggest key to success in 20 years for me has been experimenting with compost and sometimes including seaweed in the compost, but turning the compost regularly. And the second aspect of compost that I'm a firm believer in is compost tea. I make a kind of five gallons at a time compost tea, which is a rich compost infused liquid that you can put on the plants in terms of roots, and you can also spray it on the plants and it's good to keep away bugs. I don't use any organic pesticides whatsoever. I do that all with companion planting. And if I'm trying to get rid of slugs, I use cat tins filled with cheap beer. Don't use expensive beer. Slugs love cheap beer. And uh, lots of flowers that attract beneficial insects is the only way I've ever done it. And, and it works. You have to overplant the garden with flowers. You really can't have too many but you just want to make sure that they are the kinds that attract the insects that will take care of the bad insects. I purchase uh, red wrigglers and I put quite a few in there and you can get 2,000 red wrigglers for $20 and you spread those around the beds. They're fantastic. Um, I also usually once a season will buy a box of ladybugs from a nursery and I usually wait to do that until I see aphids. If I see aphids, I will get the ladybugs and let them loose in the garden. And some fly away, but some go right to the aphids and just eat them up. Other kinds of flowers attract specific kinds of parasitic wasps that will lay their eggs in tomato hornworms that will just attack other kinds of bad insects. If there are pests on particular plants, I will make a solution out of two or three crushed garlic cloves plus a couple of squirts of dishwashing liquid in a squirt bottle that I will leave for three or four days so it just kind of blends together. So you squirt that on aphids and it kills them immediately. Just be sure you use plant-based dish soap to keep the chemicals uh, out of the garden. David, what do you love best about gardening? There's so many things, really, but the thing that comes to mind just now is when the garden is in its fullest and everything is so lush that 
I love to just go in, put my head down into the tomato plants, walking between the two six foot rows of, of tomatoes and in all the beds and just move things aside and be calm and take my time and see the microcosm that actually exists in the garden. It's an amazing interaction of plants and insects and animals that is a whole world unto itself and it's a wonderful place to go. And you get to eat the food. Yeah, and, and you get to eat the food. And when you're doing it, you can just pull a tomato off and be chomping the tomato and and are eating lettuce or eating the herbs because there will be a whole section of the garden that's herbs. And uh, I just I just like to go and observe the life. If you enjoyed this video, please watch these. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And I'll see you in the next video.